Hello fellow DIYers and um, focus owners I guess because it's a focus related part. Today I'm doing a different video in which I'm presenting how I'm doing the 3D printed stuff. So the part I'm doing here is the socket for the H4 headlight bulb. The reason why I'm 3D printing this part is simple. The old socket was damaged and I couldn't find a replacement part that can directly fit the old pins. Also I did not want to do a nasty wiring job. Okay, so the first step was to measure the interior temperature of the headlight, of course, when the headlight was on. I even posted that picture in a story on Instagram. Wait a second, you don't follow me on Instagram? That's insane, you can find the link down in the description. Okay, so moving on, the temperature inside the headlight was approximately 70 degrees Celsius, so I went with the ABS material. Unfortunately, I had some big problems while printing, so that is why it came out so crooked or in 3D printer language, warped. Yes, that's the black part. Okay, so moving on to step two. I simplified the design and sketched it up in Fusion 360. So usually with Fusion, I'm drawing a 2D sketch that I'm extruding into a 3D form. So here's a tip. Fusion and other similar programs use constraints. As an example, I can't freely move the lines while the constraints are active. Okay, so a next tip is to oversimplify the part that you want to 3D print, as I've done here with my first example. It's really blocky, but it's perfectly functional. Also, firstly, I usually 3D print the part out of PLA, and only after that I 3D print the final part out of ABS. The reason is simple. PLA is easy to print and I can verify if the part fits exactly. So here I'm working on the cutouts for the pins and it looks so messy because I'm using a lot of offsets and perpendicular line. After which I cut out the excess. It's a technique I've learned from school when we were working with AutoCAD 2006. That was a damn good CAD software. Slowly but surely you can see the shapes that I actually wanted to draw. And obviously we will have another problem with the movement and the constraints. So I'll skip that. And finally, lo and behold, the 2D shape that I actually want to extrude. So here we go with the extrusion process. And now adding some important details like the tabs that don't let the pins fall out. And in the meantime, I observed that I've made a small mistake. Some of these small rectangles need to be longer so that they will hold the pins in place. Now, I will also need to add some other rectangles that I need to extrude so the pins have something that they can clip into. Also, if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. As for example, in this project, I'm trying to keep the timeline as clean as possible. That is why I'm jumping so much forward and backward. Okay, so now I moved on to making the channels that the end of the pins will sit into. By the way, did you know that the end pins of the H4 bulb are actually 6.3 mm spade connectors? So as the last step for the simplified part is to round the channels. And finally I'm done. So moving on to the post-processing part, that is actually part 3, making the G-code for the printer, and after which I went to part 4, started printing. Now this usually takes the most time, I think for me it took like one hour, and while the printer was doing its job, I was watching some Netflix series. I guess this is the easiest part of them all, cause the machine does the work. As for the printer I'm using, it's a Prusa i3 Mark III in an enclosure. So now let's move on to step 5, trying out the part. In the meantime, I reprinted the part in ABS, so if you see the black part that I'm inserting the pins into, now you know why I'm doing that. So this translucent part is the original one that I'm prying the pins out of and you can see the damage. So the first alternative is to replace it with this connector that I didn't want to opt for and the second one are the 3D printed parts that I'm showing right now on the screen. The grey parts are PLA and PETG that would not survive the high temperatures inside the headlight. I'm also showing that the top corners are cut off so that the part can fit better. Now I'm just bending the tabs on the pins so that they will lock in place once I inserted them in the part. Also, I was careful to place each pin where it needed to go. For example, the pin that goes on the left has the black wire. Unfortunately, because the part was made out of ABS that actually warped during the printing process, the pins didn't go in as smoothly as I would love to. 
That's why I had to convince them with a screwdriver. And now, in the end, I'm test fitting the bulb. The good news is that it fits. And now, I will wipe off the bulb from any grease with a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel. After which I've put everything together and mounted the headlight back into the car, which was followed up by a testing period of about an hour. If you want to see how to take the headlights out of a Ford Focus Mark 1, I have a video about that. So this is the end. Now you guys know how I 3D print parts for the car. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Have a wonderful day.